much of this wilderness lies beyond the Tuckah. Take to the saddle or hike in over rough and winding forest trails, remote and peaceful, until lightning thunders across the tinderbox valleys, stinging with random savagery, or man becomes careless. The sun, the wind, and the dryness stimulate the flickering heartbeats of a fire that can turn a forest into a blackened desolation. Fires. Two fire guards get the alarm. But they're 20 miles before they reach it. 20 miles of exhausting trail hiking while the flames lick away at the forest. The problem of time and distance are enormous when the life of a forest is at stake. 20 miles through rough country with packs on their backs, knowing that if they don't make it in time, reinforcements will be even farther away. When they finally reach the fire, winded and weary, the pocket-sized dragon has become a fire-breathing monster. Their work has only begun. Well, that's how it was before the United States Forest Service developed its own airborne squadron. Smoke jumpers, parachute firefighters, one answer to the problem of fire in remote roadless areas. Lookouts record the first telltale sign of smoke, planes patrol. Jumpers dropped near the fire. Compared with earlier methods, it's simple as one, two, three. Fast and efficient. Minutes instead of hours or days. They get to the danger spots fast, before the flare-ups get out of hand. One or two men at the start of a small fire and a large army arriving a day or two later. Smoke jumping looks easy, doesn't it? The graceful way the jumper seems to glide to earth. But how would you like to climb out of a plane and land in timber or on a mountain rock yard? It's rugged, all right, even landing on flat ground. To prepare for their scrimmage with untamed nature and wildfire, smoke jumpers go through a physical training period as rough as spring workout for any top-notch football team. Hit and roll. Off your feet. Take that landing shock where you're best upholstered. Back muscles. Coordination. Quick on your feet. Build up those ankles, arms and shoulders legs and all. But the real test of all this stretch and strain is the muscle-building torture rack. Hours, days of hard, tiring, back-building exercise. Yet they're glad for every bit of strength and coordination they've developed when they come up against the gallows, where the jumper learns the importance of right body position and just what sort of shock to expect when his chute jerks open on his first practice jump. Another step in the thorough preparation every smoke jumper gets before he jumps. Training so advanced that in 1940, the Army was able to draw upon Forest Service techniques in organizing combat paratroopers. There are classroom sessions too, like this one, where a Forest Service instructor explains the special chute they'll be using. and more hours getting used to the jumping suits designed to protect them against the hazards of landing in the rocky, timbered mountains. The abdominal brace holds them together against the strain of the opening shock. The clumsy-looking collar of the heavy padded canvas jacket protects the neck and throat from limbs and snags. The pants are padded, too, and the webbing-guarded crotch can take any sort of treatment a jumper is likely to encounter including barbed wire fences. The best shoes to complete the safety ensemble are loggers. They give much needed support and protection to the feet and ankles. The headgear is a cross between a catcher's mask and a football helmet, guarding the face and the eyes from branches and cushioning the head against rock and log. The single point release harness holds two chutes. The one in front is a spare that pays off on those rare occasions when the back chute is slow in opening. Every piece of the jumper's equipment is designed to give him better odds against the dangers of his job. In timber, 
the jumper always tries for a small grassy clearing. But a timber landing, where the chute catches firmly on a tree, is easiest. Featherbed landing, they call it, when they're stopped in midair by the tree's springy action. Every jumper carries a hundred foot coil of rope in a pocket of his jump suit. An important part of his training is practice in the safe, fast way to get down out of the tree. With well thought out equipment, training and jump techniques, Forest Service smoke jumpers have had a phenomenal safety record. Very few injuries, no deaths in 10,000 consecutive jumps. With all of its glamour, parachuting is just a faster, more efficient, and in the long run, cheaper way of getting firefighters where they're needed. Training, the rehearsal jumps, and fighting actual practice fires are the build-up toward the first fire jump. When a smoke on a remote mountain is sighted by a lookout and radioed to the dispatcher, then it's fire on the mountain. This is the payoff. Tenseness, while they fly the rough air over miles of timbered ranges to that point of smoke that marks the objective. Directing the pilot over the course he's chosen, the spotter drops a drift chute to check on the erratic and often treacherous wind conditions. It landed near the spot. First two jumpers, this is it. Only a few men jump at a pass, sometimes only one, because the clearings they try to hit are small. that dropped them also delivers their supplies. Firefighting equipment, food, even drinking water. Parachuting these things from treetop height. Safely landed, the jumpers signal the plane that all is well. Operation routine. Now the thrills are over, and the jumper is just another firefighter. A man with calloused hands doing the necessary, unglamorous job of grappling with a forest fire. Jumpers almost always get to a fire while it's far enough for one man to control. But for the sake of safety, two men are always dropped. And by getting to a smoke in time, smoke jumpers save thousands of dollars, as well as thousands of acres of our forest resource. Sometimes when an unusually strong dry wind blows a fire out of control, larger concentrations of jumpers are used. Descending in force, to hold and put out the fire that threatens the life of the forest. With the fire out, equipment must be tagged for pickup by pack mule. Then, the one problem smoke jumping doesn't solve, the long hike up. In fulfilling its charge to protect range and recreational resources, the Forest Service is constantly striving for improved methods of fire prevention and control. Lightning fires cannot be prevented, but man-caused forest fires can. Every of his personal responsibility and be careful with fire in the forest. You do your job, the smoke jumper is doing his.